Hey everyone, it's Lindsay, and thanks for tuning in to First Aid Express. In medicine, communication is a large hurdle and barrier to good healthcare, even in places where physicians and patients speak the same language. Now consider a language barrier, which has even worse implications. Studies have shown that language barriers significantly impacts a healthcare professional's ability to deliver appropriate, timely, safe, and effective care to patients. Thankfully, we have a solution that helps us overcome this barrier, interpreters. Our bridge between patient and physicians to ensure we find a common communication ground and provide the best treatment possible. Today, we have a singular learning objective for this quick fact, to identify and apply the appropriate integration of interpreters into our clinical practice. Without further ado, let's get a move on. Okay, first things first. Never make assumptions of a person's English proficiency or preferred language. This means whenever you read the patient's name on the chart or walk into a room, never make assumptions of the language they speak based on their name, color of skin, race, or their accent. We've echoed this in many of our videos, including gender and sexuality inclusive history taking, patient-centered interviewing, and many others. Do you remember the old adage that says never judge a book by its cover? Who knew that would also imply in medicine? Always be sure to ask a patient at the beginning of your encounter what their preferred language is. Now, what do we do if the patient says that their preferred language is something other than your own? There are thousands of languages spoken across the globe and even more unique dialects within them. So it's important that we get some help from a professionally trained medical interpreter. These individuals have undergone rigorous training to become proficient in medical terminology, communication, and breaking down the language barriers that many patients experience. Physicians or other healthcare professionals may serve as an interpreter if they're fluent, native speakers, or certified in the patient's preferred language, but be sure to note that in the chart. Interpreters come in many different forms, whether your hospital employs in-person interpreters or subscribes to a virtual phone or video interpreter service. Many large hospitals employ in-person interpreters of common languages spoken such as Mandarin, Spanish, French, or Hindi, depending on your area's demographics. For example, Chicago has a large Polish population, and in my hospital system, we have in-person Polish interpreters. However, for those who speak a very unique dialect, like Thai, Tagalog, or Bavarian, languages less than a half percent of the world speaks, the virtual phone or video interpreters may offer expertise in a more efficient manner. Next, now that we have our interpreter services with us, how do we go about the interview? The first thing you should do is introduce yourself to the interpreter and allow the interpreter to introduce themselves to the patient. This will clearly define the roles and explain why another person is in the room with the patient. Next, you should prepare to give some extra time for the interpretation services so you can interview the patient while asking one question at a time. Throughout the interview with the interpreter, you should speak with the patient normally facing them while speaking and listening to their responses. Avoid giving direct commands to the interpreter, such as tell them or ask them. The interpreter is speaking on your behalf, so use regular language. Additionally, it's important to understand that some languages might not interpret or translate medical jargon well, so it's important to be prepared to describe medical disease, circumstances, or treatment in other words. This is no different than communicating in your preferred language to lay people who might not understand complex medical terminology. Lastly, let's talk about location and where the interpreter should stand in the room. For spoken word in-person interpreters, the interpreter should be standing next to or slightly behind the patient. However, if you have a patient who uses sign language, the interpreter should be next to or slightly behind the physician. If you remember our discussion on communicating with patients with disabilities, it's also important to clearly enunciate your words and allow unobstructed views of your mouth so that some hearing impaired individuals can lip read. Be sure to check out that video if you haven't done so already. And one thing that the book doesn't touch on is where to place a phone or video call interpreter. It may not be tested on step one, but it's always great clinical practice to be knowledgeable of where these interpreters should be. For a phone call, place the phone on speakerphone and allow the interpreter to speak in close proximity to the patient so that they're able to hear. Sometimes, patients may prefer to hold the phone while you speak to them so that the interpreter can speak more directly to the patient. When it comes to video interpreter services, make sure the iPad or video has the patient in clear view while allowing the patient to see the interpreter. Sometimes, this means the iPad may be between the patient and the physician or directly adjacent to the physician. 
This is especially important for spoken language, but also sign language, so that the patient be able to hear and see the interpreter. Phew! A few quick important points that sums up our express fact on the use of interpreters. Let's check in with a quick flash quiz. For patients whose primary language is not English, what is one of the first questions you should ask? Ask them their preferred language. Even if a patient seems like they speak English well, many times their preferred language might be different. Asking a patient their preferred language will help decrease language barriers so that you can get their entire story and give them the care they deserve and need. Remember, never assume English proficiency or language preference based on assumptions of their name, skin tone, or accent. We have a few take-home points from today's video. It's always important to ask patients their preferred language. And if that language differs from your own, always get a professional interpreter, however they come whether in person, on the phone, or a video visit. Be sure to allow extra time for the interview and speak normally as you would in any other patient encounter. Using interpreters is an important clinical skill to break down communication barriers that many patients already encounter. The key to delivering timely, safe, and effective care is to make sure that nothing gets lost in translation, both literally and figuratively. Again, my name is Lindsay, and it's been a joy walking you through First Aid's Public Health Chapter. If you thought this video was helpful, throw a thumbs up down below. I'll see you back here for more First Aid Express videos. Good luck and happy studying.